Amen. Amen. I was trying to understand the lyrics. <laughs> something, something, something. <laughs> but the rhythm is good. And I want us to have a good rhythm here tonight. Good night to Barbados. St. Lucy and St. Joseph. A friend of mine from St. Andrew said today that he is coming. And his name is Andrew. Andrew, are you really here? There's several Andrews here. I told a young man a few minutes ago that Theory, I just met Theory two or three minutes ago, and I told Theory, look, the speech that I propose to make tonight is perhaps a speech made for Theory. And a lot of us are somewhat older than theory but I think it is a message that should extend to all of us I have not come to address economics I have not come to address the more technical subjects I come at a time in Barbados where there is crisis and there is a crisis in our political system and there's a crisis among our young people. Deep crisis. And I come tonight to address the topic politics, morality, and faith. Please pardon my mode of dress. I just left church. I removed the tie. The Anglican Church had its annual synod open and as all of us know this is the beginning of Pentecost yes I love Sundays and I love people who love God I heard that I love people who love God and we all know where wisdom begins with the love of the Lord. And today is the celebration of the day of Pentecost. And we as Christians are not devout. I came up with a Christian family, a Christian home, a Christian tradition. And tonight you're hearing the voice of a sinner. And I acknowledge God. And I know a few of the scriptures. And I know the power of God. And I know the power of prayer. And I want to thank all those people who called me in the morning at 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning and prayed for me. And prayed with me. And prayed for this country. And prayed for the young people of this country who are in crisis. We at this age have known the men of Barbados. And what Barbados do we intend to leave for the young people of this country? On our present course, we're not doing so well for the young people of this country. On our present course, we're not doing well by the young people of this country. This is a country in crisis. This is a country whose political system is in crisis. And what are we going to do about it? What is the people's farmers doing about it? What are we doing about it? I, so, I have so much respect for the work that Marcia Weeks and Dave and Caswell and Lamamba and Bongo Light and Kimar and Maxine McLean. I have so much respect for the work that they have been doing. Give me another name, please. Ferdinand. Kimar, I call Kimar's name. Rose Corbin and Philip. Take the ball, Rose and Philip. I call it the Coalition of the Righteous. These are good Barbadians, these are good human beings. 
who have gathered together in small numbers and who have agreed to fight this government and demand for is we are not afraid and we say those words tonight because we live under oppressive government we live under repressive government we live under a government that intends to take our freedoms away and what is our recourse what can we do in this country this work that you've done is necessary work from saturday to saturday as we say in barbados in hot bright and sun and meeting at a place called independent square in the shadow of the national hero of this country the preeminent national hero of this country in his shadow you have reaffirmed a commitment to ensuring that Barbados will once again be a better place. And that is noble. And that is why I call this the Coalition of the Righteous. Politics, morality, and faith. That is my topic tonight. That is my theme tonight. And politics, people let Political scientists will tell you all kinds of things about politics. They will give you all kinds of definitions. And I say to you that politics is the way in which we organize our society. That is it. Politics is not about the structure of a government. Politics is the way that a government proposes to organize a society. How do you distribute resources? How do you plan for housing? How do you plan for education? How do you plan for health? How do you organize your society? And we live in a country in which the government is dismantling all of the freedoms, all of the policies, that we have known and the policies that have been sacred, the policies that have ensured that every woman and every man and every child in this country should have access, fair access, to housing, yes. to education, to health. And every week in that parliament, you are meeting a government that is bringing policies through legislation to that parliament. And were it not for Marcia Weeks and Dave Weeks and Maxine McLean and Kimar Stewart and Casual Franklin. You would have had laws passed in that parliament. Your parliament. Which would have abridged and infringed your freedoms. Thank God for this place. Thank God for your numbers. Thank God for your participation in the political life of this country. Because if it were not for this group, this government would have trampled the rights of the citizens of this country. Tonight I say thank God for the people's parliament. We have reached a stage in this country where the people's parliament now has greater legitimacy than the official parliament of this country. Because if they knew what they were doing, they would pass just laws. And they would pass just laws without protest. And I want you to remain vigilant. I want you to keep your ears to the ground. I want you to keep your eyes open. Because this government is not serving your interests. And as you've done with the cybercrime bill, and as you've done with the child protection bill, there are bills coming. And I want you, People's Parliament, the real parliament, the parliament where truth is told. I want you to remain vigilant. There's a moral crisis in this country. And that's why tonight I've come not only to speak to you on politics, but I've come to speak to you on morality. Because there has been a view in this country 
that there's no relationship between politics and morality. We have come now in Barbados to expect that a politician is necessarily a gangster, a ruthless person, a person of no values, no morals, no principles. That is what they have got the people in this country used to. That a politician is a gangster. And that you destroy people's lives. And that you engage in trickery. And that you abuse power. And that it is about the survival of the fittest. And that there ought to be no compassion. There ought to be no empathy. There ought to be no sympathy for the vulnerable in this country. And that is what they have got Barbadians used to. That a politician is essentially a gangster. And that is why I come to the young people of this country. And that is why I told Thierry tonight that I want him to hear my voice and to say to him that politics must embrace morality. Politics must embrace morality. We came up in a country in which our parents taught us the difference between right and wrong. And every decision we took, every decision we took, we would pause and ask, is it the right thing to do? That has been our way. That has been the way of my generation. Of the righteous and of sinners. We have all stopped and asked the question before we make every decision. But is it the right thing to do? And we make mistakes. And we often do the wrong thing. But the important thing is that we stop and we ask the question. Is it the right thing to do? And what is the wrong thing? And might I not avoid the wrong thing and do the right thing? Because that is how our parents taught us. And I want to say to you tonight, People's Parliament, that our politics must embrace those principles. That in politics we must pause and say, is it the right thing to do? Is it the right thing to pass a cybercrime bill? And is it the right thing to pass a cybercrime bill that threatens the right of freedom of speech in this country? And I say to you tonight that when a government passes a law, and that law intends to infringe your rights. The government did not pause and ask the question, is it the right thing to do? That is morality. That is morality. And I want you, the People's Parliament, and the people of Barbados to demand of your politicians that their actions and their decisions, as I said earlier, should embrace morality. And if you have a government that cannot and does not and will not embrace morality, you have illegitimate government. And will you keep illegitimate government? No. Will you keep illegitimate government? No. Will you keep this government? No. Will your voices of protest sound louder against this yes. government? Yes. And will you continue your marches from Saturday to Saturday? Yes. And will you continue your meetings from Saturday to Saturday? Yes. And do you recognize that this government is not acting in your interest tonight, Barbados? Yes. And do you think you have a moral government? Do you think you have a moral government? I'm going to ask the question in, the different, in a different way. Do you have a moral government? A good government? You do not have a moral government. No. And there's a time coming. There's a time coming. Barbados, there's a time coming. And when the time comes, I want you to reflect on gatherings like this. We may not have 10,000. We may not have 10,000 gathered here, but we have the strength of 100,000. There's a time coming. And when that time comes, yes. I want you to go back to your villages and your yes. neighborhoods yes. and to speak to your neighbors yes. and to speak to your relatives yes. and to speak to your friends. Yes. Commune with them. Yes. 
and remind them of the experience that they have had under this government. Yes. And when that time comes, yes. and you exercise your right yes. to remove this government, yes. 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 what will you do tonight, People's Parliament? Get rid of them. You will get rid of them. Of them. There's a time coming. This is not a moral government. And my theme tonight is politics, morality. They need to go. They need to go. The worst government. They need to go. The worst government. And you have told me that you have the strength and the power and the spiritual power of a hundred thousand. And as many of us are, as are gathered here tonight, we're going to move this government. We're going to move this government. We are going to move this government because we are not afraid. We are not afraid. And when we pause and ask the question in removing this government, but is it the right thing to do? People of Barbados, People's Parliament, when we plan to move this government, will it be the right thing to do? Well, please do it. I come to faith. I come to faith. Yes. We don't do it. I said I would speak to you tonight on politics, morality, yes. and faith. Yes. I am about to open my phone because a neighbor wrote me a message this morning. And when I read his message, I thought that I should come here tonight and share it with you. Please permit me to read it. For me, I know I don't have a lot more time left. <laughs> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my luck thou hast taught me to say. People are coming to my office and holding my hands in my office and praying with me. People are calling me at four in the morning and praying with me. Because they have seen, they have seen the battle. They have seen the difficulty of my endurance. But people's parliament, this is not about me. This is about you. And this is about the suffering people of Barbados. So my tribulations are not tribulations of national concern. My tribulations are private. But my tribulations are taking place because I've dared to take a stand. And I've dared to sit alone in a parliament against 29. And I am not alone. I am not alone. And I know the tribulations that visit my life from day to day. And I see the arrows coming from all directions. And I repeat my favorite hymn. When peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my luck. Thou hast taught me to say. It is well. It is well with my soul. So don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. There are little children in this country tonight who went to bed without dinner. There are little children who will wake in this country tomorrow morning. And they won't have breakfast. And they'll be exposed. They and their mothers will be exposed to predators. Who will offer them dinner? And who will offer them breakfast? So my tribulations are not great. It is the tribulation of the suffering in this country which must bring us to an understanding of the country in which we live. And when I spoke about the government, and I will repeat it, when I spoke about a government that is spending $188 million in this, this financial year, and we standing up here and believing that we live in a free country. 
a government that will spend 188 million dollars in travel, right. overseas travel, first class hotels, sipping champagne, getting a thousand dollars a day US as a per diem. So my tribulations are not great. The tribulations of the people of this country are the tribulations about which we must be concerned. Our young and vulnerable children, our old people who are, who are in abject loneliness. Because this government is an indifferent, is an indifferent government. This government does not care. Does not care. So I want to read what my neighbor said to me this morning. Good morning, Ralph. Just a small word for you. If God, all things are possible. Having done all, stand. And he said to me, God brought me through my illness and hospitalization with one health crisis after another. Then, when I was better and knew that I was, my discharge was delayed a further six frustrating weeks. But in that period, I learned to trust God even more. The doctors did their best, but as my friend says, it was God who performed a miracle to bring me through. You are going through very tough challenges now, and there will likely be more and bigger challenges. But having done all, stand, and God will fulfill his promises. The situation may seem impossible to solve because he must have the glory when your deliverance comes. And he ended by saying, be blessed. And it occurred to me, when I read that, that I should read it for you. He wrote that to me. But that applies to many of us in this country. Many of us of tribulation. Miss Weeks, a few weeks ago, called me and asked me what to do with a certain letter. This is serious and this is dangerous. You are occupying a dangerous country. Where the husband and wife starts a television program and they are to be punished with threats of physical violence against them. We are living in a dangerous country. And a few weeks ago, I was at Senator Walters' picnic. And Viobi called me and asked me to verify a news report. That a news report was sent into VOB saying that it came from me. Saying that it came from me. And it was a false report. And it was sent from a New York number. And it was saying that Kimar Stewart they had a picture of Kimar's face yeah. that they sent to Starcom VOB uh, instructing them to issue this news report. Uh, well, she have and this that? news report was intended to embarrass us. Uh -huh. And when I spoke to the nation and to VOB, I told them that that is akin to political terrorism. Yeah. All right. yeah, yeah. We are living in an environment in which the enemy is going to all kinds of lengths to destroy this movement, to destroy people who stand against the government. But you have stated them, and I want you to say again tonight, in the face of political terrorism, in the face of the threatening letter, in the face of their refusal to put this meeting where Marcia first wanted it, we are not, we are not afraid, but let us have faith, because we all come to a point where we lose our faith. I have addressed you on politics and the virtue of politics. I have addressed you on morality and the need to be moral in whatever we do, whether it is politics, whether we are policemen or priests, let us import moral values into what we do and how we do it. Let us always pause and ask the questions before we make every decision. But 
is it the right thing to do? You live under a government that doesn't ask itself that question. Government asks itself, but is, is it the expedient thing to do? Will it make us popular? It doesn't matter how the public feels. Will our policies make us popular? And government must have the courage, the courage of conviction, the acts itself, when it is on the point of passing law. But is it the right thing to do? And we thank you so much. We thank you so much for taking the stand that you have taken against this government. And I don't want you to lose your faith. I want you to remember he rules. I want you to keep that faith. The substance. We forgot he rules. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Of things not seen. Of things not seen. Right. Not seen. And that is such a beautiful piece of scripture. The substance of things hoped for. Hope. So that faith involves hope. And it involves evidence that we cannot prove because we don't see it. But people's parliament tonight, I've come to tell you. Keep your politics virtuous. Keep your politics clean. Continue to embrace morality and have faith. I confess to you, being mortal, being a frail humanity, that several times I lose my faith. I lose my faith. Often I lose my faith. And when those good and honorable people call me on mornings and say, well, press on. And pass on without fear. Yes. And come here tonight and speak about my convictions and my commitments yes. Yes. to the young, the middle age, and the age in this country. Yes. Why should I be afraid? Yes. Knowing that this group exists. Yes. Knowing that there are good, God fearing people in this country who yes. exist. Yes. And that they will join their hands together and continue to pray for this country. Yes. And that they will continue to have faith. And that they will acknowledge that faith without work is dead. Is dead. And so we will continue to work in the interest of the people of this country. And so we will continue to work in the interest of the children of this country. Who are being dragged into a, a, a suspect of moral decay. That all is going, that is going into their mind is filth. From some people who call it themselves entertainers. And I say to you tonight that the government has been sponsoring a lot of those entities who are corrupting the minds of your children. But I will come back. And I will come back and give you details. For he has my time run out. If you all stay here much longer, the police will come and use you. So let us say goodbye. And let us say goodbye with those words that will come to define this movement. We are not afraid. Now they're telling me to go on to 9.30. Well, if, if they're giving you a little more time, do you want a little more time? Is it not passing your bedtime? No! 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 But let us continue to labor. Let us continue our labors. Because the sister there said just now, faith without works is dead. And we continue to do this. Because what we do is not hard work compared to those who went before us. Thank you, Kenneth. I can see you, you know.
Hey, we don't work this day, and by that they mean that we must go into the highways and byways. And we must continue to labor for the freedom of this country. And I say to you that when we feel that we are losing our faith, when we feel that we are about to give up, let us cast our minds back to those beautiful people called parents and grandparents and great grandparents whom we probably never met but were it not for them we would not be standing here tonight they never gave up and if they had given up we would not be here tonight can we consider that and should we not consider that our neighbors are not difficult and should we not plan that if we continue to do this together our labors will not be in vain let us remember our parents those of us who have. Let us remember our grandparents, those of us who are lucky enough to have. Let us remember our great-grandparents and our great-great-grandparents who never gave up, who lived in a more difficult Barbados, who lived in a Barbados when labor was not rewarded with salaries. And tonight we have salaries. Maybe we don't have the freedoms that we want, but let us continue to work hard because others before us work harder. Let us not lose our faith. Let us never give up. Let us continue to work in the interest of the people of this country. Let us acknowledge that we have a government which is dishonoring the people of this country. I say to you tonight that politics is a process. It begins with a fall. You have to think about the policies if you're a politician. What policies will you employ in relation to education, to health, to housing, to the fixing of roads, and that's another issue. And your thoughts must be based on truth. That's right. Your thoughts must be based on truth. A politician must think truth. Because thought leads to speech. And you hear politicians speech in that parliament. And I say to you that from week to week, I sit in there and I don't hear a lot of truth. Bear lies, yes, yeah. I don't hear a lot of truth. Government. And if Bear thought lies. must lead to truth. Our thought must be comprised of truth. Yeah, if thought must be based on truth. Speech also must yeah, be based on truth. Bad. But if their thoughts are dishonest, their speech will be dishonest. Correct. And if their speech is dishonest, the actions they take will be dishonest. And at the last meeting that I addressed this people's parliament, I told you that there was a politician in this country who stood up in that parliament and told you that he has given 1,200 jobs to those poor people in the city. And I met with the people in the city and they told me it was not true. And I want you to go and ask the people in the city if he has delivered on the 1,200 jobs that he promised. But it began with a thought that was dishonest. And it led to a speech that was dishonest. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the action is dishonest. And you read in your papers today of a project that is bringing this country to the precipice of danger. Yep. When this government should occupy itself with the rehabilitation of criminal wrongdoers. wrongdoers. This government has entered into a dangerous negotiation with the criminal element in this country. Yes. A dangerous negotiation. That's right. And a prison officer, Caswell, did you speak about this tonight? Caswell, why did you not tell the people about this tonight? That you were giving a prison officer. Thanks to Maria Bashan, investigative journalism. That's right. Thanks for the existence of Maria Bradshaw. Right. Finally. 
this is dangerous. When the government is handing up money to men to deter them. My God, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Truth. It is the night. Share the truth. And dangerous things happen at night. Oh, yeah. But this thing has you. become so dangerous. Thank God is for you. That those men now shoot each other in broad daylight. Yes. I'd rather. And enlist your police service <laughs> to do its job. Your government is in negotiation. With a criminal element. Yeah. I got no respect. In your place. Yeah. With money. Yeah. With money. Yeah. And I'm getting calls from people every day. That the welfare check is not enough. <laughs> Women in an apartment with three children. <laughs> and a delinquent father. An absent father. And we are handing large amounts of money. And I'm not embarrassed to say to you that I met. I met with a certain man from the city. And as he was walking through my door, I'm so afraid to say this. Do you want to hear it? Yes! Will it not make you afraid? No! We've got God for our side. We have God on our side. So speak. God is on our side. That's right. Speak. That's what he's doing says. God is on our side. Correct. Speak. And he whispered into my ear that there are men in this country who have committed three murders. And they're not in St. Philip. And your government, your government is paying the money. Correct. Not to commit a fourth murder. Which of us will be that fourth murder? Which of us? We'll take the stray bullet. And perhaps we won't take the stray bullet. If the government gives him enough of your taxes. Keep it quiet. Keep it quiet. Let us leave that alone. But when Maria Bradshaw went and asked the minister to give explanation for these payments, he referred Maria Bradshaw to the Attorney General of this country. I know that you are good. And when she looked, uh, all listen to this paper. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all read it. But I swear you don't know what it is. Yes. Yes. And did you not tremble with fear? Yes. Were you not afraid for the future of your country? Yes. Were you not afraid that you are bringing up your children in a country which is unstable? Were you not afraid that you were bringing up your children in a country in which they could lose their lives if a criminal wrong door with a gun is not paid enough of your taxes? <laughs> it is as serious as that. That's right. And the Attorney General of this country who believes that he is beyond criticism and when I criticize him in the Parliament of this country, his response is to insult me and to say that I have committed five of the seven cardinal and daily sin. But I will continue. I will continue to ask the Attorney General of this country the questions. The questions to which the people of this country are demanding answers. And the journalists at the nation today reminded us that one minister was asked to give a talk. And he referred the journalist to the Attorney General. <laughs> what did your Attorney General say? What did you read in your newspaper today that the Attorney General say? No comment. Obviously. No comment. Dumb, well, dumb, we come to these meetings, we have a comment to make. Dumb, dumb, and our comment dumb. is that this government is an incompetent government. Our comment is that this government has lost the right and the legitimacy to rule this country for much longer. That's right. And what will you do when the time comes? The time is coming. All a bunch of criminals. The time is coming. The time is coming. This is a dangerous land. And this land is being made more dangerous by a dangerous government. And this government is making our lives more dangerous because this government. That's right. Be a criminals. 
this government from the top to the bottom all of this programs it is a fact they are in association that's right this government is transactional oh yeah you know what I mean by that of course that if the government wants somebody to support it, the government doesn't appeal to the person's sense of morality and decency and honesty and integrity. The government appeals to the pocket. The government is taking your taxes and it is distributing it to all types of people in this country merely to support and the expedience of support and popularity and love. Whole body. Whole body. Whole body. Whole body. We are not afraid now. Let us not lose our faith in the emperor. Let us not give up. Let us never relent. Let us continue to fight for the freedoms and the interests and the entitlements of our children. We brought them into this world. They did not ask us to come here. We brought them here. And we have a responsibility to our children. And the government has a responsibility to protect the children of this country. And how can you protect the children of this country? When you are making transactions with men who endanger the lives of the children of this country every day. That children cannot leave their houses. Children cannot run across the street. And every time there's a murder, you hear the, child, you hear the adults. They lament that the child could have been in that spot where the bullets flew. That is the lament of this country. Yes, they are right now. It has become a dangerous place. And this government has found itself an unfit and inadequate to solve the problem of violence and crime in this country. And when a government starts to pay people. When a government takes up taxpayers' money and starts to give people a reward for peace, that's what they're calling the program. A peace program. And simmering just below that surface of apparent peace is a bomb waiting to explode. And how many of us will be there? How many of us will be unlucky enough to drive past that street? This is serious business. Yes. This is a dangerous place. Yeah. This is a dangerous land. Yeah. Uh, this is a dangerous government. Dangerous government. But the time is coming. Correct. And we are not afraid. We are not afraid. I want you to leave here tonight remembering that we will never be afraid of this government. I want you to remember and I'm going to deal with this when I come on the next occasion. Caswell, did you speak about the cybercrime bill, cyber bill tonight? No, I and did you not. tell these good people that the minister admitted at the select committee last week, she admitted when I asked her if as a result of this cybercrime law, they will be able to charge people in Canada, the United States and England, and Mr. Franklin, do you remember what she said? She said no. no. And I asked the question because I know the law. And I read the bill. And that bill does not give this government, this police service, the power to charge anybody overseas. And if it does not give the government or the police to charge anybody overseas, who is it intended to charge? Who is it intended to charge? They can't charge a fellow in Toronto. Uh -huh. They can't charge a fellow in the United States. Uh -huh. They can't charge a fellow in Britain. It is designed for you. All right. They come in for you. It isn't only the letters that Marcio East got. It isn't only the letter that Kimar Sir got. It isn't only the false reports that they're sending to VOB to embarrass us. All right. I said it in the They come in for you. And the young man in BLP reminded you when he said that the law is there to stop y'all from cursing ministers. 
It's getting dangerous. Please go home. Please go home and pray. Right. And lock your houses. And hope to see another day. Right. Hope to see a better day. In Jesus' name. But a better day is not coming tomorrow. But let us hope for a better tomorrow at some point in time. I want to thank you so much for coming here tonight. I want to thank you for the solidarity that you've shown with each other. I want to thank you for the interest that you've shown in your country. I want to thank you for the interest that you've shown in your fellow citizens. I want to thank you for the expression of love. Because it is love ultimately, it must be love that brings you here. It must be love that takes you down to Fontevelle every Saturday. It must be love that takes you up Chinside and Broad Street and takes you into a square called Independence Square. It must be love. Continue to love. Continue to love people's parliament. Good night and God bless you.